Have you ever struggled with your artworks in Photoshop? In today's video, I will be showing you four super important steps to create better photo manipulation. And now basically, until the end of this uh, work or artwork, I repeat the same four steps. First thing is to create the depth of field and for that I will add Gaussian Blur. So I will take the furthest element that I have here, I will go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and I will add a 5 pixel on Gaussian Blur and I will continue with the other buildings and characters. To color grade everything usually I use a selective color and I set the blending mode to color and then I will play with the uh, colors on neutral and I will change them until I have the result that I want. The next step is to darken up everything so then our lights will be really really visible. For that I will use either levels or exposure adjustment layer. So for example on this corner I use levels and I will drag this white slider to the left. Keep remember that the parts that are closest to our eyes should be darker and the ones that are really far away should be brighter. So after I darken up all the elements that I had in my artwork, I decided to remove some parts of uh, that dark uh, part, that shadow. For example here on this uh, right building, normally Without the shadow, um, it is like that. Let's uh, add an exposure adjustment layer and decrease the exposure a lot, something uh, like that. And then on the mask part, I will take the soft round brush and the black color. Flow should be really low, around 2-3%. And here on the mask, with the black color, I need to know where my light source is coming from. So it's coming from the left side top left side so here on this uh, wall of the building it sh should have some lights so I will just paint on this uh, part of my building but not on the entire wall so just a few strikes of light something like that and of course here on the roof and wherever you feel like uh, it's touching that uh, part of the building and that will make my design look more realistic rather than doing uh, like a gradient something like that if you paint like a gradient from top to bottom and then the fourth step is to add some colors in those lights so for that I will create a new solid color adjustment layer and I will set that color to um, really uh, bright orange color something like that and I will set the blending mode to overlay I will double click on the layer and hold alt and drag the right slider more to the right around 100 and click ok and then select the mask and click invert you can use the same path as you had here with the lights and it's super easy you just hold alt and drag that mask on top of the mask of the overlay and you can replace it click yes and now you will have the lights on the parts that you already painted on the exposure if you want if not you can undo it and just go on the mask take the white color this time and you can paint with uh, the brush on some other areas on some or some parts of uh, those buildings again and that will add some colors in those lights and then I will repeat the process to the entire artwork I'm pretty sure that you notice it already the lack of shadows so our 
characters look like they are you know floating so we need shadows and there are two types of shadows there are contact shadows and then the bigger shadow so for example this building here this corner that i have added it looks really weird because it needs to have a lot of shadow here on the base so the first it's adding a contact shadow which is uh, this one if you can see it so for that i will play with levels so i'll add a levels adjustment layer and i will darken up this part a lot and then i will invert the mask click on the mask click invert and with the brush tool and the white color you will paint only on the base to add a contact shadow so don't go too too far just where the building is touching the ground and paint there with the white color on the mask something like that and then for the bigger shadow this one you will repeat the process and add with the same technique the bigger shadow and for the rest of the characters for example this one i will need to take care of the light source so the light source is coming from behind from the left top side so that means that the shadow should be in this direction the second bonus is to add some ivy on the buildings because they should look deserted so i found this picture on unsplash and i will put it on top of my bricks from the left corner and then i will set the blending mode to lighten and then i will play a bit with the brush tool on the mask and i will hide some parts of that ivy and i will add a gaussian blur to make it blurry and underneath it i will add some shadows and i will add more on the right side and also in the back the third bonus is to add some atmospherical fog so everything looks more natural and more realistic if we can say that because we don't really have zombies in our life right now so i'm going behind everything like here where we have this furthest building and i'm going to create a new layer and i'm going to take a fog brush and i will select a color similar to the background and i'm going to paint on that area but not too much just to hide a bit that part something like that and then i'll continue to add more fog in front of the other buildings for example here And the last thing that I'm going to show you today, a really cool thing, is to add some potholes, some reflections on the ground. So in order to do that, I'm going to hide the foreground details. So in my case, this barbed wire and the grass. And I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer. And here I'm going to drag the highlights to the left. Something like that to make it really bright. And then I'm going to on and click on the mask and click invert. I'm going to take a brush, any brush that you want. And with the white color, I'm going to manually draw those spot holes in the ground, wherever you want them. For the moment, something like that. You can always change your mind, you know, and draw them again. And then on the mask properties on the feather, you can drag this slider more to make them blurry. All right. Then hide this uh curves adjustment layer and press ctrl alt shift and i to create a screenshot drag that uh, screenshot then bring back that uh, curves adjustment layer and also the screenshot and hold alt and click between the layers i know that you don't see anything right now that's because it's the same image on the screen now we need to press ctrl t and flip this right click and flip it vertically and now if you look and drag the image you'll see that it's a reflection in those parts that we just uh, created and drag it a bit down and now you have a reflection on the ground after that you can add a hue and saturation hold alt and click between the layers and decrease a bit the saturation for the reflection also if you want to add more realism you can create a new layer change the blending mode to color and the same clip it inside by holding alt and take the sovereign brush and a bluish color and you can paint on the reflection and then double click and add 
uh, blend if by dragging the right slider more to the right hit ok and you can decrease the opacity to that layer and now the reflection looks much much better for the camera row filter press ctrl shift and i again right click convert it to a smart object go to filter camera row filter and you can copy my settings from basic detail effects and calibration do you want to discover more secrets my channel is full of them watch those videos next if you want to learn more from my experience